Living on Mars might sound like a fairy tale, similar to living in a sci-fi dream that's come true. Far-fetched or not, that future is closer than we think. Imagine NASA, the space scientist professionals, teaming up with SpaceX, the world's wildest space geniuses, to pull off the most epic space mission ever. It's a superhero team-up happening right in outer space and can be compared to building the city of Rome, launching Apollo 11 to the moon, setting up the ISS, and colonizing North America all at the same time. How can this be made possible? What's the plan that will drive them to success? Challenges of colonizing Mars. According to Elon Musk, exploring new worlds is a must for the future of our species. Flying around in space may sound amazing, but encountering and stepping onto a new planet, having new adventures, and making humanity a multi-planetary species is the end goal. Taking that first step towards living on more than one planet can be exciting, and Mars seems to be where we're aiming our sights. We've been eyeing the red planet for ages, and now it's finally our moment to make that giant leap to set up shop on Mars. This great feat will present many new explorations, along with many challenges. The challenges of making a home on Mars are huge, and the danger levels can be considered off the charts. As humans continue to innovate, mind-blowing solutions are created to tackle these challenges. Now let's get real about living on Mars, what challenges might be presented. The first big hurdle is how insanely unfriendly it is to humans. Mars is the least hospitable neighbor in our solar system. The Martian atmosphere is so thin that you can't survive outside without a special pressurized suit. Even if humans could somehow breathe there, the low pressure would mess up the circulatory system in less than a minute. And drinking water, you can forget about that. With an average temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, water would be frozen solid, and even if you tried melting it, the low pressure would turn it straight into vapor. Dust Dilemma How dusty does the red planet get? Mars is infamous for its massive dust storms that can cover the whole planet. We don't fully understand why they happen, but they can become a real headache. In 2018, NASA's Opportunity rover got dusted off by a storm, abruptly ending its mission. The Martian dust is a clingy, sticky substance. It sticks everywhere, anywhere, and to anything. On top of that, and here's the kicker, it's toxic. Breathing in Mars dust could mess up a person's lungs, making the effects irreversible. Anything humans would need to bring into their habitat needs to be clean and dust-free. Cosmic radiation hazards. Here's another challenging curveball you would have to face when visiting the red planet. Cosmic radiation. Mars, with its thin atmosphere, offers little defense against the colossal nuclear powerhouse we call the Sun. There are some ideas regarding shielding Martian settlers from these cosmic rays presented by the powerful Sun, but blocking out 100%? Now, that's a tough nut to crack. We don't have solid data on how prolonged exposure to these rays will affect people. The closest data available is the ones presented by the Apollo astronauts, and they only spent a few days outside Earth's magnetic field. They seem to have no effect due to this, and have lived long lives with minimal complications. Buzz Aldrin is still knocking down flat Earthers at age 93. Only problem here is that those Apollo astronauts were exposed for just a few days. What about weeks, months, or even years on Mars? At this point, we're venturing into uncharted territory. The first Mars colonists are basically signing up for a cosmic radiation experiment. Elon Musk, the SpaceX guru, put it bluntly, people will probably die. It's a harsh reality, especially in the early days of Mars settlement. But can it ever get better, the lost atmosphere and the dream of terraforming? Digging into Mars's history, we've received enough data to understand that it wasn't always such an icy, barren world. Liquid water likely flowed on its surface at some point in the last 4.6 billion years. There's even glimmers of hope for finding fossilized signs of past Martian life. Once confirmed, it would mean that Mars once had an atmosphere. So, what happened to it, and can it come back? Is it possible to terraform Mars, turning it into a cozy Earth-like haven? It's a big question, and the answers might just reshape the fate of our neighboring red planet. So imagine this, a planet loses its atmosphere and it faces two possible outcomes. Either the atmospheric elements get absorbed into the planet's surface, or they get blown away into space. Well, guess what? Mars went for the second option. Solar winds likely stripped away Mars's atmosphere, and here's the probable reason. Magnetic fields. 
Earth's interior is quite lively with tectonic plates floating on molten rock around a hot rotating core. This generates a robust magnetic field that acts as a protective shield against the Sun's onslaught of heat and radiation. Now for Mars, on the other hand, the red planet doesn't have this luxury. There are no atmospheres, no plate tectonics, and no rotating magnetic core like there are on Earth. Mars is just a big chunk of red rock. It's possible there have been some activity in the past, but at some point it stopped. Over billions of years, the Martian atmosphere decided to make a grand escape into space and hasn't returned. Now putting the atmosphere back over Mars isn't a walk in the park. Some propose wild ideas, like Elon Musk's Nuke Mars. Well, what is Nuke Mars? This concept involves detonating nuclear bombs in space above Mars's poles creating a Minison effect. This should, in theory, release greenhouse gases and warm up the planet. Sounds cool, right? Well, not really. Most of the greenhouse gases from Mars went up, not down, so even if we nuked the poles it wouldn't pressurize the planet much. Scientists say the best we could hope for is about 7% of Earth's atmospheric pressure. That's not exactly a cozy habitat. So, if we're eyeing Mars, we need to come to terms with the fact that Mars isn't exactly rolling out the welcome mat for humans. Terraforming Mars might be a dream for the future, but right now, it may only be a dream. From Moxie's oxygen feet to 3D printed egg shelters, if Mars isn't going to be more Earth-like, we might have to bring Earth-like conditions to Mars. NASA's rover, Perseverance, is tackling this challenge with the Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXIE. This toaster-sized unit successfully converted a small amount of Mars's carbon dioxide-rich atmosphere into oxygen using extreme heat. Elon Musk, ever the visionary, suggests living in cities under glass domes on Mars. Sounds futuristic, right? The idea is to create a pressurized atmosphere within the domes, but there are hurdles. Transporting dome materials to Mars or setting up a manufacturing facility on Mars poses extreme challenges. Even if we overcome the initial roadblocks, domes would likely get covered in dust and protecting against cosmic radiation would be another puzzle to solve. NASA is exploring 3D printed habitats inspired by the egg design from AI Space Factory. The concept involves using Martian rocks, crushed and mixed with plant-based bioplastic for strength. Automated robots would lay down concentric circles of this mixture, creating a structure resistant to cosmic radiation and extreme temperatures. The egg shape is chosen for structural efficiency, mirroring nature's design. However, there's a catch. Sophisticated airlock systems are necessary for buildings on Mars, making the idea of personal homes with traditional front doors a bit extravagant. Walking through and being covered in toxic dust isn't an option. Realistically, living underground seems to be the safest bet. While it might not sound as thrilling as a domed city on the surface, it's the most practical way to ensure safety or protection from Mars's harsh environmental challenges. Balancing autonomy with human harmony. Handing over the reins to autonomous robots exemplified by the likes of Boston Dynamics or anticipating the application of upcoming innovations like the Tesla bot could be a fitting solution. As a society, we've honed our skills in constructing underground tunnels, transport systems and bunkers so the prospect of extending this expertise to a facility on Mars is not far-fetched. Regardless of the model we choose, there's still the human factor to contend with. Picture this. People cohabiting in close quarters for months and years, surrounded by harsh conditions with no escape. Sounds like a recipe for insanity, doesn't it? NASA acknowledges this challenge and is actively addressing it. They are currently in the recruitment phase for a year-long study simulating a Mars mission. The experiment involves four individuals living and working in a 3D printed module simulating a Martian base, complete with challenges like resource limitations, equipment failures, communication delays, and other environmental stressors. NASA is specifically seeking participants with a master's degree in a STEM field, and the study aims to monitor both the physical and psychological effects on the participants throughout the year. Essentially, we get to observe if four geniuses can collaborate for the betterment of mankind or if they succumb to internal strife to try and better understand human nature on a different planet. <laughs>